Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. Happy New Year. Gr glad to be back. And I'd like to walk you through my first quick tip for 2011. We're going to take a look at something in InDesign. It's not actually new. It's been there since CS3, but we're going to take a look at some new things along the way. Uh, first of all, the end result is we want to use InDesign, an InDesign document inside of another InDesign document. Again, that's not new. But we are going to learn some new CS4, CS5 things along the way. And a lot of times people, even though they're on the latest version, they're either using it like they always did or they never even learned the feature in the old version. So, of course, they're not using it in the new version either. So let's take a look. I'm in InDesign and I've got um, a document open with some frames ready to go and ready to place some content in. The problem is I don't know where my content is necessarily. Well, I know where it is but I don't know how to get to it easily. Well, we've got in CS5, this is kind of a new thing, we can go to Mini Bridge, and this will let me navigate all my folders and hard drives and find my content. There's a search. I can even launch Full Bridge from here. However, sometimes you'll know where your content is right in the Finder. There's the folder I want. I just want to get to it inside of the, inside of the program. Well, one of the quick things you can do is you can drag that folder right on top of your bridge icon. That will tell bridge to launch that folder in bridge. So as soon as I do that, bring bridge to the front, there's the folder with all the contents in it. Now that's great. I'm in it in bridge. Bridge lets me select one or more items and I can do a place in InDesign directly from bridge. Now that would be the CS4 way of doing it. However, in CS5, I've got the ability to use MiniBridge, but I want to be able to get to this folder quickly and easily in MiniBridge, and I want to be able to get to it often. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back one level. I'm just going to go up here and choose go back one folder to where the folder is that I was just in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this area of favorites over here on the left-hand side. I'm just going to drag that folder into my favorites area. So now there's a folder there called multi-place. And the multi-place folder is now a favorite. If I ever want to get rid of it, I can just right-click on it and say remove it from the favorites. It's not going to delete it. It's just going to take it out of the favorites. However, now that it's in favorites, I can go back over to InDesign. And in InDesign, when I go to MiniBridge, guess what? MiniBridge keeps track of the same favorites that you have set up in regular bridge. So I can go to that same folder just like that. And now I can get to that folder from any InDesign document, no matter where I am, or any Photoshop file, no matter where I am, because Photoshop, InDesign, and Bridge all share the same favorites. Okay, so here we are. We've got the same documents here, same images. I'm just going to go ahead and select a bunch of them here. Let's do all the way down to here. So I should have selected everything in between. I just did a shift select. And now I want to go ahead and place those in InDesign. So I just drag the whole set of things I just shift selected. And that will tell InDesign to place all of those files at the same time. Well, at least load them into InDesign to be placed. Since I didn't drag them into any particular frame, what it's doing right now is it's loading the placement cursor with those images and those documents, and they're now ready to go. At this point, I can put Mini Bridge away. And now what I can do is I can go through and tell it which frame to put which image in. It tells me I have 10 things selected. I can use my left and right arrow keys to go back and forth between the 10 things. And then I can say, bam, I want that one there. I want that one there. I want that one over there. This one up here. This one here. And this one here. And I want to skip the motorcycle, so I'll just go to the next one. There's some text. I'll place my text in the other frames, and I can keep going. Okay, so now this, this one here that I haven't placed yet, this is actually an InDesign document. So it's different than the rest, which are just images. I'm going to now hold down my Option or Alt key on Windows, Option key on Mac, Alt on Windows, to tell it to replace the other image that I had placed. Now... It got rid of the old one, put the new one in, in the same frame, it's ready to go. So at this point, I've got two things left in my placement gun that I don't need, and what I want to do now is get rid of them. 
So all I have to do is one of two things. I can hit the escape key or just click on your selection tool to stop placing. So now those two are unloaded from the placement cursor. You're ready to go. So now I said that this was an InDesign document. Let's zoom in on it here. And what we, how do we know it's an InDesign document? We can go to our links file. And in our links, it shows me that the format for that link is an InDesign document. Now, why would you do this? Well, sometimes it's easier to lay out a file in InDesign and use that layout in another document, but you don't want to have to copy and paste and piece it all back together. So by placing this InDesign file, it is now coming in as one solid graphic. So what that means is I can size it as one graphic. I have to worry about it falling apart or losing its format. I can also go in and do things like opacity or different effects on it. So if I bring up my effects panel here, let's go to effects. There we go. And in my effects panel, which I will dock under here, we can now do things like lower the opacity of that entire graphic, including the type. So you can do things with a InDesign document that you placed like a graphic. So it treats it like a graphic. I can't go in directly and click on the type or make any changes. I'd have to go back to the original InDesign file to do that. And yes, there's a way of doing that as well. So there you have it. Multiple place using bridge, using mini bridge, placing InDesign files inside of other InDesign files to maintain the layout. This also helps in collaboration where you've got multiple people working on separate files and you want to build it all together as one InDesign document. They can give you their InDesign documents and you can place them in your master file. Maybe someone designs an ad in InDesign and they've done all these cool things in the ad. You just place the whole ad as an InDesign file. So there you have it. Quick tip for your first Monday uh, after the holidays. Quick tip on the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and thanks for watching.